everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cigar Lounge. My name is Aaron Paletta, and I'm joined by John Hunter. I'll get it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> I really screwed it up last time. Uh, today we have, uh, what's in, in my opinion, I'm sure yours as well, a very tasty, very scrumptious little cigar. And this would be the Carlos Toronto Exodus 1959, but this is the 50-year edition. Now, we did the Exodus already a couple episodes ago. Actually, yeah. this is the first episode. Um this one, I, I didn't know what this was when I first went in uh, to a boxcar to get it. I'm like, why are there two? Just one's a different color. Didn't realize that it has this little 50-year band on it. This is a celebratory uh, edition, which is, it's interesting because this particular cigar only has tobaccos from three regions. Five. Where, three. The Exodus 1959 that we smoked a couple episodes yeah. ago is a five-country blend. This is a three-country blend. Hmm. Then what I was researching this morning is wrong. Uh, then from you, cigar you, aficionado. Yeah, this is this is only a three okay. uh, three-country blend, um, which even cigar aficionado said was odd, considering that their other one was a five-country blend. Hmm. So I think you need to go and uh, I will double check that. Get get some new eyeballs. Thought yeah. you read some wrong shit. But this is uh, speaking of cigar aficionado. Yeah. This was ranked number 12 uh, when, when this came out in 2010. 12 out of the country, the world, what? It was ranked number 12. Okay. That's right. Cigar Aficionado ranked it 12 for that year. Okay, number for 12. the year. All so right. 12, 12th best cigar of the year. They also gave it a 93 rating. And I can't remember. We'd have to... I'm not even going to bother Weech because she's on her phone. We'd have to actually go back and, and, and see what uh, yeah. the other 1959 was was ranked because I just don't remember. I think yeah. it was a nine I don't know, ninety two or ninety four comes to mind. I really couldn't tell you. Ooh. That's that's that sun grown smell. Yeah. I do this uh, this one I've had I've only had one of these before. This thing was absolutely beautiful. It's got Nicaraguan fillers, um Honduran binders, and the sun grown Brazilian wrapper. And uh that sun grown well it's like having a sun dried tomato. Versus yeah. regular tomato. It's just got all that extra punch to it. Is there something about leaving it out in the sun that makes it do that? All right, yeah, I'm ready. You ready? ready? I'm ready. I can't wait no more. <laughs> See, now you're over today like I was on that's, the other one. That's because I really like this one. Wow. <laughs> oh. That's quite um quite nutty. I can't say almond more like peanut. And leather. Is there a little leather in there? Yeah, I'm getting the leather notes. Slight earth tones. You can definitely taste the wrapper. It's yeah. distinct. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's got a good draw on it. Yeah, very smooth draw. Too early to tell about the burn. Yeah. Although I have to say, ain't nothing I've seen that come anywhere close to that uh, Black Ops of yours. Yeah. I Honestly, I think that was just one of them. It was a dud. Yeah. I think it was a dud also. There's also some sweetness. That must be from that uh, that sun-dried wrapper. I gotta say, I really like the, the copper coloring of the, the wrapper. <coughs> oh, yep. <coughs> Took it down the chimney there. I wasn't supposed to do that. <coughs> Well, any of you out there watching would know. You accidentally breathe that in, you cough up chunks of lung. Yeah. Oh, man, that really gets you. Yes, I do like that copper. Uh, what was the other one? Silver and green. Silver, silver, green, and black, I think the regular yeah. 1959 yeah. was. It's still an impressive label, Yeah. the other one. But this one, just using that copper, that's some... It that's really accents classy. the color of the wrapper. and Very bold. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, the three country blend, that's just unusual considering that their other one was five different countries. And I can't remember on the other one what the five countries were, but this one's only the three, which is the Nicaraguan, uh, Honduran, and the Brazilian. <clears throat> which, in my opinion, packs more of a flavor punch than the other 1959 did. And that was a, a bit odd. But then again, this is a special edition, so whoever their blender was over there did a hell of a job. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you were going to get to. Are you going to tell why it's the 50-year edition? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll A little you... bit about it. Uh, I'm not going to go into full detail. Like it's, I could have literally spent hours reading about the Toronto family. It's crazy. And uh, it's their story is something that I would suggest read about it and get the full story because I'm only going to tell you bits and pieces of it. It's a uh, very hard, and parts it's a heartbreaking story. It's but it, they triumph extremely. It's, well, sometimes those are the best. Yeah, the best stories. Those have when they have an outcome like that. Because yeah, in in something like that, it gives you something to strive for. It's crazy how they turned out with what they went through. It's an amazing feat. Well, and we'll leave you to tell, to get to that after we take a little break, which is not going to happen quite yet. Now that I'm getting into a little bit, my burn is actually pretty even. That pleases me. Uh, this is a box press, ain't it? Yes. Yeah, both 1959s are box presses. But since we do have a little bit of time here in this first portion, I'm going to go into one of my special ones from Mr. K. And I think today I'm going to be discussing the Andalusian Bull by uh, LaFleur. This one, I think it was only like a $20 cigar. It wasn't one of the more expensive ones that he gave me. Uh, I gave it a 93. If you have a chance, go get LaFleur Dominicana Andalusian Bull. Go grab one. There's a hidden flavor in there. Him and I both could not figure this thing out. So if any of you out there can do it, uh, if any of you out there can do it, um, please email me and tell me what you think it is, and then we'll discuss back and forth. More on that, though, once we come back from a short sponsor break. Stick around. We'll see you guys here back real soon. The Cigar Lounge is sponsored in part by Rockstar Divisions. Get yourself the Rockstar treatment today. We offer lawn care, landscaping, tree services, and leaf removal. Whether it's spring, summer, or fall, we have the services for you. Give us a call today, 724-605-5135, and get the Rockstar treatment that you deserve. La Vega Cigar Company by Aaron Paletta, brought to you today by Worby Films. Get your La Vega Cigar today. Choose from the Il Primo or the Il Segundo, sold exclusively by Worby Films and the Cigar Lounge Cigar Show. We Jorks Photography believes in all your adventures. From graduating seniors to capturing the magic of your wedding day, to corporate events and restaurant openings, and everything in between. Weedworks Photography is here to tell your story. Photographer Alexa Paletta believes in a simple approach, that no vision, dream, or memory to be made magic should ever be out of reach. For more information, visit weedworks.com. Hey guys, welcome back. So before I get back into the Andalusian Bull, I, I want to briefly explain the box press to people. Um, if, if you notice, and I don't think it, we don't have a nice spare camera ready to go. I, so you can't get in too, too close on this, but it's not round. Started off that way, but it's not round now. It is more square shaped. Um, how that happens is when, when these guys are making uh, these cigars, they make them normal. They roll them. Yeah. Uh, it's no big deal, just like any other cigar in there. What they do is they put them into molds. Now, the best way to describe these molds, it's a tray. I think they're about yay big. And they've got slots, like coin slots in them, like you'd line up pennies and dimes and all that. And they stick these cigars in there, and they very carefully place the top of the mold on it. Yeah. Well, these are square molds that they're using so they're putting round cigars in there they and they have to like squeeze them in and roll mm -hmm. them to get them in there because you know you rip the, the wrapper and everything on them 
what happens next is once they get a whole stack of them, they put them underneath a press. And you take this press and you're tightening it down. And, and only the guys and the gals who are doing this, because it's not just guys who make these things. It's some badass women in there rolling these things. Mm -hmm. But only they know how tight, like that tension from, from turning that thing, they know when to stop. And I can't remember, something like 45 days or something, or hours. I can't even remember. I'd have... Write that down, Weege. We have to put that in there. How long they leave it in the box press or underneath the press. Um, so they, they tighten this thing up. They leave it underneath the press. When they pull it out, they're ready to go. They're, they're in the correct shape mm -hmm. at that point. But something about how they do it makes it to where they're not spongy and go back into a, into a round form. Mm. Uh, and actually, you showed me one yesterday. Who who was that? It was by Drew Estate. Yeah, the Java. That yeah. was probably the most – yeah, the Java. I, yeah. I'm on a – fan of the java but i that was probably the the best looking yeah box press i've seen i mean that thing looked like it had sat in that mold for years because it did not have any give to it whatsoever no, it, it was a perfect rectangle yeah. is what that was now back to the la flor dominicana andalusian bull um like i said this was not a, one of the most expensive ones that mr k has ever given me but the taste the taste was impeccable um this one was not a solid profile the entire way through. So it did have its thirds. First third, I think it was a warm chocolate and what I thought was a touch of mint. Now that might be that mystery flavor. I just don't think it was mint. Um, it had some, uh, oh, where am I at here? Second third was notes of uh, red pepper. That red pepper went in and out. Not as, not as bad as the, uh, what was that one? What was the other one we had that had the red pepper slapping what me in the, the black ops? The black ops. Yeah. Um, this one, it was it was faint. It was like it was there, and then it was gone. Hmm. And then it was there, and it was gone. It was quick in and out. Uh, and then once it got to the final third, it was pretty much the same profile as the sec the first and second third combined. So it was very very interesting, but very good. Uh, like I said, fifteen to twenty bucks for a stick. La Flor Dominicano Andalusian Bolt. Go grab one. You will definitely enjoy that. You have information now on the Toronto family. Mm -hmm. mm. And actually, I got to grab my notes. My dumbass forgot it in my jacket. So give me one second. That's why we have Weege. That is unprofessional and uncouth, sir. Uh, well, sue me. <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody knows anything about the Toronto family, they started in Cuba. They had they got huge. They had uh, like almost twenty five different farms, which almost half of them they owned. Uh, they had four to six hundred acres altogether. Um, they started in what did I see? Nineteen sixteen. Oh, long time. Yeah, it's well over 100 years now. Yeah, well, when the, the exodus, do you know what exodus means? Exodus means, here, yeah, I actually wrote this down, so I wouldn't, it's the mass deportation or departure of people, or mainly immigrants. This is why it's called the 50-year anniversary. This is a celebrated cigar of them fleeing Cuba. Do you know where they went? The Dominican Republic. I will say Miami. <laughs> no. Well, some of them did go to Miami, I think. Uh, I love Miami. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anytime a male, I, th I do believe this, anytime a male, they were basically born into the family of cigars. They got a piece of their company, and a lot of them kind of like worked <clears throat> together, but they were seeing who can put out the better cigar, but they're all one company kind of separated in, on its own. So, <clears throat> the Toronto family went through so much. When Castro took over, they basically lost everything. All their, everything they built, they lost all their farms. They now, lost, this was before? Yeah, right before they left. Okay. And the main reason why so, they left. So, why they left. Yeah. Uh, they had millions in the bank. Gone. What a dickhead he was. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy <clears throat> because... Uh, forget which one it was, but one of them went to Miami and was selling computer systems and that. Um, his father was in the Dominican Republic doing his roots, you know what I mean? Doing the cigar thing. And 
one thing led to another, and the company has grown back to where it's at. At one point, they were selling uh, 18 million sticks a year. The very next year, 2 million sticks. That's a hell of a loss. Yes. And you would think it's something like that going from 18 million to 2 million. It might put the company out. But they've been through a lot worse than just a lot of sales lost. And I, I can't remember exactly why. I think it had a lot to do with like a, the Depression at the time. I think it was around the 1970s when they took well, that loss. Well, 70s wasn't the Depression. No. 60s and 70s was NOM. Yeah, well, it had been NOM then. I don't remember why. I didn't say why where I was reading. See, and this is why our school system needs to have better history classes. Right there. Hey, I slept in school. <laughs> it shows. Yeah, well, I work with my hands, not my mind. <laughs> okay, I can't even argue that. I'm not even going to try to argue that. <clears throat> I work with my hands, not my mind. Don't you need your mind to operate your hands? Nope, they just do it. <laughs> oh, we Ouija grease? Okay, Ouija grease. Must be real then. Mm -hmm. Hey, an artist doesn't think about the art. Their hands do it. Whose side are you on? This side. <laughs> now, that is a fascinating story. Um, I didn't know all that about uh, the Toronto family, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I, matter of fact, I first, I first found out about uh, Carlos Toronto and that the Toronto family yeah. when I first picked up the, the other Exodus. And because uh, Bobby down at Boxer, I mean, he gave me a little bit of info about it, but I, I bought it with my eyes. Yeah. I thought it looked cool as shit. I'm like, you know what? I bet you that's going to taste good. Yeah. And it was only like six bucks too, six yeah. fifty or something they, like that. They're not too expensive. And they're... I think this was like 25 cents more, 50 cents more. Yeah. Which I'd gladly pay the 50 cents more because this is way more flavorful. The burn on the user. The burn. Oh, yeah. Impactful. My burn hasn't really adjusted much i mean it's slightly wavy but at least it's all in the same yeah in the same thing i mean the taste is still it's pretty solid all the way through yeah that flavor profile it hasn't really altered much it's still got that toastiness that nuttiness that sweetness from uh well the, the sweetness and the the punch from that sun-dried I almost called it a sun-dried tomato. From that sun-dried wrapper, yeah. uh, I do have a little bit of berry in there. I can't figure out what berry that is. Unless that's just a sweetness coming into play, but it is... I can see a little bit. It's very, berry? very hint. But yeah. what berry would that be? See, that's, and, you know, and that's another thing. Yeah. That's why I, I want people to email in, to, what did you taste in this? Yeah. Especially that Andalusian bull. Me and Mr. K, we sat there, and he was like, there's something in here, and I don't know what it was. And I think he said, I think he might have said menthol. Yeah. Now, I used to smoke menthol cigarettes, which I really miss them. But I know menthol, and that was not menthol. I was more on the mint side. But if anybody out there tries that Andalusian bowl, I'd be curious to, to see what you think as well. I've Especially never heard with of this that one. If, if, if you sense any berries in there, email us and let us know what, what that was. And I'm not. I'm not sure. There is. There is a berry. There's something in there, mm -hmm. some sort of sweet berry. I just can't figure out what it is. Um, we are going to go to uh, our second um, sponsorship break, and here pretty soon. When we come back, we got. Well, you got a boatload of 2020s. Yeah. You're. He's always going to have 2020 releases. Um, I don't have very many 2021s because as of right now, or at least during the filming of this. There's only so many that we can grab. Uh, I'll say, for when I was just talking about before with having those thoughts and comments emailed in, uh, the email is info.thecigarlounge at gmail.com, but it will always be attached, Weej, to the bottom of every single episode that we release. Yeah. Uh, but I, we do want to hear from you, yeah. about, especially about those things. But we are going to take our, our quick sponsor break. And when we come back, 2020s, 2021s, any last bits of information that one of us can pull out of our asses, hopefully we're a little bit farther into this, and we'll go from there. We'll see you guys back here in a few. The Cigar Lounge is sponsored in part by Rockstar Divisions. Get yourself the Rockstar treatment today. We offer lawn care, landscaping, 
tree services, and leaf removal. Whether it's spring, summer, or fall, we have the services for you. Give us a call today, 724-605-5135, and get the Rockstar treatment that you deserve. La Vega Cigar Company by Aaron Paletta, brought to you today by Worby Films. Get your La Vega Cigar today. Choose from the Il Primo or the Il Segundo, sold exclusively by Werby Films and the Cigar Lounge Cigar Show. We George Photography believes in all your adventures. From graduating seniors to capturing the magic of your wedding day to corporate events and restaurant openings and everything in between. Weege Works Photography is here to tell your story. Photographer Alexa Paletta believes in a simple approach, that no vision, dream, or memory to be made magic should ever be out of reach. For more information, visit WeegeWorks.com. Welcome back, guys. We're in our final segment of this particular episode on the Toronto Exodus 1959 50-year edition, and you might as well kick it off with them 2020s. <laughs> because there's a there. lot of them. <coughs> Ooh, yeah, don't inhale these. R- <coughs> wrong. We went down the chimney. <coughs> Guess what we're starting off with today? Another Alec Bradley. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we had a boatload of Alec Bradley's last episode. We had episode. a whole page of Alec Bradley's yesterday. Uh, the Alec Bradley Project Maduro 6.60. Now, we're going to have to look up and see what the numbers mean on some of these cigars. Cause well, the 6 point... I've just never seen... Is it that list- the size? Yeah, I've never seen it listed like that, like 6.60. That's a 6-inch cigar with a 60 diameter, a 60-gauge okay. diameter. Right. I just haven't seen it listed like that's, that. Normally, they, they spell all that out. Yeah, that's a new line. That was... Uh, Released in November, at the end of November, early December, or right before December. Uh, All Saints Dedication Commandment. This is a new line. Um, it's Nicaraguan. That's what? Nicaraguan. Wow, what? I fucked that up again. Can you say that one more time? Nicaragua. There we go, I got it. Nicaraguan. Yeah, well. No mames! <laughs> uh... Should we really have him reading off these things anymore? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, we should start trading these off. <laughs> I traded you last time because you couldn't read the 2021s. <laughs> uh, and Mendola. Oh, here we go. The signature Series Connecticut Cannoli. He got better at that one. That was Amendolia last time. Yeah. Amendola. Yeah. Uh, that's a new line that's uh, released uh, at the very beginning. How come I got 2021s on here? You shouldn't. Uh, there's two of them here. The, well, we uh, might as well read them off then. The yeah, Mendez signature one I just said it was released at the very the first of the year uh, for 2021. Uh, same with the Amendola signature series Habanero Cannoli. How do you get How do you get three different pronunciations? All because I don't know what the actual seconds. pronunciation I is. I said it how many times? Amendola. Amendola. All right. Well. You heard it from him. Uh, there's a few of them coming out, or already out, right at the end of the year. Uh, Unless it's listed as a 2021 because it got pushed over. Maybe yeah. they were December releases. Yeah. Well, because that was pulled straight from 2020. Yeah. Well, as you see, there's two of them, 2021. Oh, that's right on the border then. Yeah, the first of the year. Here, look. Amendola. All right. Amendola. <laughs> I think this is the funnest part of the show, is trying to figure out this, how these were pronounced. What do you mean to figure out? I know how they're pronounced. You, oh, for you? This is my favorite part. The funnest? This is my favorite part because I get to listen to him butcher these. Well, it's fun to me, you know? I, gotta, I enjoy cigars. I enjoy how... He just doesn't enjoy not... saying saying the names. Yeah, well, I got to figure it out, damn it. But uh, there's a few of them from coming out, obviously. American Viking Box. Yeah, I can say that one. The Press Rebellion Robusto. That is that was released in February 17th. Uh, it's a new line. Oh, that was a while ago then. Yeah, a whole year. I've never heard of the Viking Box. Have you? No. Maybe about the. We we'll have to take a look at that because we actually have to go to the yeah. to the cigar shop anyway. So yeah. might as well see if anybody's there. Got are uh, 
about six or seven of them different uh they're all new lines every one of them they're about six or seven from the american viking um they're all nicaraguan nicaragua wow holy shit nicaraguan yeah we gotta wait until i'm actually awake to do this <laughs> it's not helping any anyway but that's, that's the excuse we're going with yeah the I think what happened when we filmed at nine o'clock at night and you butchered Amendolia. We're gonna have to do it at like noon after lunch or something. Mm. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> they're not disclosed what factories they're coming from. So none of those. None of them. Not a single one of them. They're all yeah, new see, lines. The twenty twenty ones. Sometimes we know where they're coming from, and that's weird that they don't have it on there. Yeah, yeah, they're all, those. all undisclosed. They're all new lines and. The American Viking is, they're all released, so uh, if anybody has any suggestions on which one we should try, let us know. Yeah, I would definitely want to know, because I've never actually heard of that company before, and mm -hmm. I, I would be very interested to try those. But we're going to have to, we're going to have to shop around. How many more 2020s you got? That's basically it. You want to go on some 2020s? Yeah, I got some 2020s. I hope you got something in there you can't pronounce. Well, I speak five languages, so that's, unless it's in Russian or German, then... I think we're I'm gonna have to right. go find a German cigar oh, and write there you it down. go. First one right off the bat. German engineered. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, actually, that's all it says. German engineered cigars. NN. I don't even know what the hell that is. I have to look that one up too. Uh, that one's coming from the Dominican Republic. Let's see. It's a brand new line. It is scheduled for. Actually, it was scheduled for January first. So that should already be out. We could probably look into that one. Uh, the H Upman Super Magnum. Coming from Cuba, uh, factory is undisclosed. Brand new line. It was announced, and there isn't there is not a date for release on that one yet. Uh, Hoyo de Monterey. You know, I was looking at this before before we started filming. The Hoyo de Monterey. I was trying to figure out where the hell did I hear that name from. Never had one before, but I have heard that name. What was that movie with Nicolas Cage, The Family Man? The Family Man. He, have you ever seen that movie? Mm -hmm. Okay. When he went, when he was living his alternate life, yeah. and he went into interview with the company that he worked for in his other life, yeah, the old man, I call him Mr. Ducksworth, because I don't know what the dude's name is, but I remember him as Mr. Ducksworth from the Mighty Ducks. He smoked Hoyo de Monterey. That's where I heard that name hmm. from. Uh, that one's coming from Cuba. It was announced, a brand new line, does not have a release date on it. Uh, the Intemperance is coming from let's see nicaragua it's a limited edition oh okay there you go once something's labeled as limited edition you're never going to find it some somebody like mr k is going to jump all over it and they're going to scoop them all up and then we're going to be shit out of luck but hey, i don't really have too many 2020 or 2021s here today those are the ones i got um a German engineered. I'm going to go find that one. Mm -hmm. How is your cigar taste? I mean, it's all, honestly, it's been pretty much the same flavor profile since it was lit. Yeah. Nothing, nothing's really changed. It's got a little bit bolder. Yeah. Definitely thicker. I mean, it's, it's packing quite a punch. Which, another thing for, for all the newbies out there, don't do what <clears throat> we are currently doing, and that's enjoying a cigar on an empty stomach. Because now I'm really hungry. Yeah. And I'm about to just put this out and eat it. Like I'm starving, dude. I really need to. Who, who came up with this early morning filming? That wasn't me. I, it was definitely I'm you. Sure that wasn't me. <laughs> oh, it was you. It was me. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was you. Hey, well. Then you bring breakfast tomorrow morning. Well, you're the chef. No, I'll no. bring the griddle. How about that? <laughs> the griddle? Yeah, no, I'm good on all that. But anyway, that's our 2020s, 2021s. Um, I, we do have, have the, those few requests. Or, Rick, no, dude, I gotta Here you go. I gotta get away from yeah. him. He's, I'm he's the one up. tearing things up. He, Listen to this he's guy. Rub, he's rubbing off on me. <laughs> My request of if anybody tries the Andalusian bowl, email me. Tell me if you could figure out what that minty, mentholy flavor was because it's going to drive me absolutely crazy. Um, but that's all we have for this show. What's our our next episode? Is the, the, the Strata. Strata? Yeah, Rocky Patel Strata uh, is next up uh, in a couple weeks. So yeah. until I then. It's the first time I'll be trying that one. I haven't had it. So oh, yeah. That'll I, be a live one for me. That'll be a live one for you. Well, until then, have a good smoke. <laughs>